How are you guys? What's up you guys? Feel free to ask questions. It's my first live, so I'm super excited to be here with you all. Wow, there's so many of you guys joining. Hey. Feel free to ask any sort of questions you guys want to know. I'm trying out this live thing for the first time. Let me know if there's any sort of topics you guys want to know about. Hey, 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 what's up? Feel free to ask questions, you guys. Let me know in the comments anything you guys want to know about. Metaphysics, astrology, uh, psychic life, in that world, in that realm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Hey, everyone who's joining, let me know if you guys have any sort of questions that you guys want to know. Anything in the metaphysical world, psychic world, astrology world, psychic life. What's it like being a psychic? All that kind of stuff. Any other questions? You guys can really ask whatever you want. Just let me know. I'm trying out this live thing. I'm probably going to be on for like, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Welcome, welcome new people. Let me know if you guys have any sort of questions. I should have probably specified and said metaphysical, psychic life, but whatever you guys want to know, let me know. And hi, Tomo underscore, ugh, lucid dreaming. Are you a lucid body? And like being aware of it is basically what that is. Like you are aware that you are leaving your body and that you're able to basically control whatever is, hey, welcome, welcome. Yes, yes, I do yell. <laughs> I talk loudly. It's the teaching voice. Um, but yeah, so that's really what lucid dreaming is all about. Like it really, really is all about you going into basically another world and you're able to control everything around you. What is it with the cardinal signs? Hard time is over. So the cardinal signs are having a tough time right now because Mars is in Aries. Basically up until I think June 3rd. Also, we do have Mercury retrograde. But because Mars is in Aries, you guys are going to be affected like all the cardinal signs. So anything to do with like anger, uh, confrontation, all these sorts of things, you basically have to look to see like what house it's in. And then it's going to tell you what it's affecting, you know. Hey, welcome new people. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you guys here. I'm so excited. I've never done a live before. I should do more of these. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. And what's really cool about lucid dreaming also is like it'll teach you that like you can do the same thing on the earth plane because this is also a dream like we're also dreaming here it just feels very like tangible and physical because like of the density that we're at but it's also basically kind of like a dream so that's really what it is and you know like okay so basically you know when you dream it's like you're gonna be like in the physical plane like everything around you is like maybe your friend is there maybe you are um you know in the store whatever it's like a physical plane but like it doesn't feel physical those are like the higher vibrations welcome new people let me know if you guys have any questions astrology metaphysics psychic world psychic life dreams dreaming i know there's a lot of people who are having like intense dreams during this time it's like basically your psychic gifts are coming online keep a dream journal there's actually like some really good TikTokers who talk about dreaming on here and like they basically talk about like portals and dream time. Super, super cool. Hey, you guys, welcome to the new people. Let me know if you guys have any questions, anything you guys would like to know about astrology, metaphysics, like the whole nine yards. I also put it on my YouTube to say that I am live. It's my first live and I'm excited to be live. I mean, you guys can really ask about anything else, you know, whatever you guys want. Or just like a topic we can talk about. We are in retrograde season. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of posts about that. So the basically the um, mutable signs are going to be affected the most. So Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces, Virgo. Can you tell? Can you tell what does it mean seeing angel numbers in dreams and being? on the chat with someone on the phone. So are you on the chat with someone in the dream? 
angel numbers are basically your angels communicating with you so basically what angel numbers do like different people have different so everyone has a team okay so basically everyone has like a spirit team that works with them and then your spirit three i'll get to the big three in a second so your spirit team basically is always looking to give you confirmation so like whenever you have angel numbers come through it's like a confirmation of some sort um in the dream it could be like what are you doing in that particular moment like i think it's just mainly going to be your team being like i'm here you know a lot of people are going to tell you things like oh look them up what do this what do the angel numbers mean and a lot of people also you know say things like virgo an entrepreneur you don't know what you're doing okay i'll get to you and then you're on the phone with someone who are you talking to because you're probably connecting with that person in the astral so basically what happens is like we also do work in the astral plane in dream time so it's kind of like you know, I know a lot of people think that dreams are like just subconscious, but especially if you're like more in tune with the psychic world, you're leaving your body and you're doing um, work in the astral plane. So it's like, let's say there's like unresolved things between you and someone in the physical reality is going to come up in your dream and like things like that. My big three. So my sun is Libra. My moon is Scorpio and my ascendant is also Libra. My sun is in the 12th house. Moon is in the first house. So it's like all like the psychic things. And then... um now it's transition like now it's progressed so now like in the secondary progressions my sun is scorpio my moon is in sag and my rising is also scorpio and everything is in the first house now virgo new entrepreneur you don't know what to do well do you know what it is that you are doing like do you know like what it is that you would like to do in terms of like the entrepreneurial world like do you already like are you already doing what it is that you're doing you can't stay positive about finances Okay, so this is what I'm going to say about the entrepreneurial world. Like, I feel like a lot of people, like, really, like, over-glamorize the entrepreneurial world. And me personally, like, I worked 13 jobs until I went fully independent. So, basically, like, it's really, like, up to you to see, like, what's going on within yourself. So, like, if you're someone who worries about money, maybe you need to have a second job or, like, a job in general to help fund your business. Because that's the thing. It's, like, the funds have to come from somewhere, especially in the beginning. So, it's, like, you can either save up money start a lot of it is like abundance tests also it's like i know a lot of people are like just make the jump but it's like there's a lot of people who also worry about money and finances so it's like sometimes people actually have to work first to help themselves get built up in their business so it takes time it really depends on you as a person welcome to the new people joining do you guys have any questions about metaphysics astrology entrepreneurship actually i've been doing entrepreneurship for let me see, seven, eight years now. I've been an entrepreneur for seven, eight years, but I fully went full entrepreneur in 2019. So I did like two jobs at one point. Like I basically funded myself up until 2019 and then I made that leap of faith. So it's kind of like you have to know when you're like comfortable enough to actually make the leap of faith. So thank you, thank you so much. Tay Tays, T T Tays. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So that's what it really is with the entrepreneurial world. It's a tough world entrepreneurship is definitely the most spiritual journey that you're going to ever take in your life i always say that because you have to learn a lot about yourself you have to learn a lot about like abundance tests you have to learn a lot about like not being in scarcity mindset like there's so many things that come with you know entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial world like a lot of people who like talk about being overnight sensations like you don't know what's been going on behind the scenes with them you know so it's like don't think that, you know, that these people are just, you know, super successful. Like there's things that happen behind the scenes before you actually get there. And again, you never know like the financial background for people. So it's like for people, for example, who come from like wealthy families, they already have the mindset that money is always going to come, right? If you come from like a background where it's like money wasn't always available. Oh, hey, there is someone asking me to go live together. Hi, I don't know who you are, but maybe let me know what you want to talk about um so that's the thing like it's like if you come from a background where maybe there was like poverty or there wasn't enough finances all these sorts of things you actually have to work through that within yourself to break through that so that's why it's the most spiritual journey you're ever going to take you know hey everyone who's joining do you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below anything about psychic worlds entrepreneurial worlds all these sorts of things i hope i answered your question user 9247 so on and so forth. Welcome you people who are joining. Let me know if you guys have any questions that you want to know about. It's my first live. 
pretty open to talk about whatever and just kind of give me a topic and I'll talk about it. Welcome, welcome, new people joining. Let me know if there's anything you guys want to chat about in terms of psychology or wow, it's crazy it came through psychology. I meant to say spirituality. Hello, another person's asking me to go live together. Let me know in the comments what you want to talk about. So astrology, psychic world, metaphysics, Pluto in Sag and retrograde. Hey, oh my gosh. Hey, how are you, Ashley? How are you doing? What's up? Pluto in Sag retrograde. So, okay, basically what happens is like you, so the retrograde is usually on like the cusp end of um, the generations. So most of your generation is probably going to be in the next generation. And then you're going to kind of be like the outlier, I guess. I mean, I don't like to use that word, but that's really what it is. So that's really what it is. And like, basically the karma that you're taking on is still Pluto and Sag, you know? So it's things to do with like entrepreneurship, freedom, travel, expanding the mind, spirituality, all these sorts of things. But that's what the retrograde and then the retrograde also could mean that like you basically are having like a harder time adjusting to change. Um, it can mean you go through a lot of changes within your life. Hey, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining. People who are joining, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, any sort of things you want to know within the world of astrology, metaphysics, psychic world, all these sorts of things. So many hosts ask to go live together. That's so interesting. I don't know if that's a thing for everybody else. So that's really what it is with the retrograde. It's, I mean, at the end of the day, astrology is just like the energy we have in our chart, right? So it's a little bit more challenging because of the fact that it's like, there's gonna be a little bit of that like resistance, but it is what it is. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions, any topics you wanna to talk about. How are degrees applied to planets? For example, Scorpio moon in the third degree, like is your Scorpio moon at three degrees? It's earlier on. So like with the degrees, the one that's like the most intense is going to basically be the 29th degree. Like that one is going to have a lot of karma that they have to clear through. 29th degree, sometimes there's like an association with like um, M-U-R-D-E-R. -E so it's like that could have happened in a past life um, or it could go into the shadow of that as well. Hey, Melissa, thank you. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know in, in the comment section below. So that's really what it is. And it's like also, so also when you're in the earlier degrees, you're probably going to be in that particular sign longer. So your Scorpio moon is probably going to be longer throughout your life, you know, because again, we, sh we go through the degrees so by the time we're 30, we actually like the sun sign goes into like the new sign and same thing for like later on in life, the sun and they all move slowly. So, or I mean, they all move, move differently. Taurus moon at 17 degrees. I don't know too much about 17 degrees. I just know Taurus moon at 29 degrees is an intense placement to have. There's been a lot of, um, I don't know how to word it on here, but yeah, people who were like not good people who have had 20, 29 degrees, 27, 27 is okay. Don't worry. Let me know if you guys have any questions about metaphysics, anything to do with astrology, spirituality, um, psychic world. 17 is your number. Yes. Isn't your birthday on the 17th, actually? It's a good number. It's eight, which is abundance, actually. Nice. Yeah. I do that, too. So, like, I also have my number. So, it's like... Whenever I see that number for me, it's like a confirmation that I'm meant to be in that place. So yeah, whenever I see like number 11 for me, it's like I'm meant to be in that particular place at that time. And it happens all the time. It's like sometimes I see a sign, sometimes I see a pose, especially it comes through in moments where I'm kind of like, oh, like indecisive, like where I should be. Saturn, 18th degree, you've heard that it's bad. It's also retrograde. Saturn retrograde means that um, you've had an absent father figure early on in life. So it could be mental, emotional or physical absence of a father so that's really what the retrograde means with the saturn there welcome to the new people joining let me know if you guys have any questions if you guys want to know anything astrology metaphysics psychic life all these sorts of things pluto retrograde so i actually mentioned earlier so pluto retrograde basically means like okay so what happens is like on the tail end when pluto is transitioning into the new sign and then coming back into the old sign you're gonna have like retrograde so it's like 
A lot of people in your generation might be, let's say, Pluto and Scorpio, and then you could be Pluto and Sag retrograde, for example. So it's like the karma you're taking on is that particular generation's karma. So you're still going to fall under like the Sag generation, but also Pluto and retrograde could mean that you have like a hard time with change because Pluto is all about change. And Pluto basically comes through and like destructs anything that is like stagnant in that energy. So for example, like when Pluto first went into Sagittarius, it was like breaking through norms, belief systems, all these sorts of things that are like traditional, right? So basically like that's what happens when Pluto goes through that. So like when it's retrograde, you just might have a harder time, uh, maybe even connecting with people within the generation, like these sorts of things, or just like with change in general, like it's kind of like a resistance energy. That's how I see retrograde planets. It's like a resistance added to the planet. Neptune and Uranus in the first house. So Neptune in the first house, actually a lot of people who are in the public eye do have this placement. So Neptune in the first house is like, Neptune in the first house is basically like, there's something about you that people just want to see. Like you do things, you know what I mean? So like people have Neptune in the first house, like you can be cleaning the house and like people want to watch you do that. Like let's say you're doing a live and you're just cleaning the house. Um, yeah, so a lot of the time people like who end up in the public eye do have that Neptune in the first house for that reason. It's kind of like, they could have no talent and then they would have Neptune in the first house. Uranus in the first house is kind of like, so Uranus in the first house is all about like your identity and like who you truly are as a person. So it's like Uranus is Aquarius, right? So it's all about being unique, being different. And in the first house is Aries, right? So that's really like, you really like have like that go-getter personality. Does Mars and Aries cause anger issues? Yes, it does. Actually, like a lot of WARs that have taken place in the world have started around the time that Mars has been um in cancer so can so mars like doesn't like being in the sign of cancer because mars is all about like go getter going after things um because it's ruled by uh aries right so it's like all about like again go getter energy and it's like when it's in cancer cancer is like not going to express right and you might have a hard time expressing your anger uh so what tends to happen with mars and cancer people it's like you're going to basically like have moments where you just erupt and a lot of time mars in cancer is like when you're angry you also cry like it's like an eruption of energy is really with the mars in cancer thanks for the likes you guys if you have any things you guys want to know about let me know in the comments below can you accept my live guest i don't have um, a request for that it's not coming up for me sorry neptune in the 12th house opinion so Neptune in the 12th house is like it's in its home, right? Because it's ruled by the 12th house. And it's like you probably have double of that energy then where you're like struggling. My name is Barbara. Hello. Um, <laughs> you probably have double of that energy where you are struggling with seeing things clearly, seeing things, you know, like, um, sorry, I'm just looking at the messages here. Yeah. So Neptune in the 12th house is like you're going to struggle with seeing things clearly. You're going to struggle with, um, illusions and delusions like okay the 12th house i've made a lot of videos about this on my youtube channel especially so if you guys have a lot of 12th house energy in your chart go check out my youtube channel because i go in depth 12th house is like it's like you love being up here like you have a lot of great ideas but there's such a fine line where it's like you kind of fall into the delusions aspect of it but i actually talked about this today and it's like you know sometimes you have to be delusional in life you know you have to like believe that you're gonna like do this thing right so even if everybody around you says that you're not so it's like, it really depends on the rest of your chart because you don't want to get stuck in that energy where you're just like in the head and in like the thoughts and in the clouds. You want to put it into action. You want to like go after and be go-getter. You did click on previous requests. For whatever reason, it's not coming up. I don't know why. But I did get a lot of other people earlier. So maybe because I kept declining them. I don't know. Hello, everyone. Welcome, new people. Let me know if you guys have questions about astrology, metaphysics, psychic life. You have Mars, Moon, Jupiter in the 12th house in Taurus. Yes, 12th house is an intense placement to have. Very intense. But you could also be highly psychic, actually. Highly, highly psychic. That's that Piscean energy. So it's like Pisces is like, okay, so Pisces spends so much time like in their imagination. And actually, Pisces loves to be on their own. So it's like it's because they can be in their imagination. So like that 12th house energy is like, it becomes so real for you and that's why usually you're able to manifest things well if you don't fall into the shadow aspects of pisces 12th house energy which is usually substance abuse of some sort lilith in the eighth house so eighth house is basically anything to do with sex death rebirth it's like the scorpionic energy yeah you love being on your own yeah that's that 12th house energy 12th house loves to be on their own like because okay what happens with 12th house is like 
you spend like even if you spend a little bit of time with someone even if they're like you know your friend or whatever you still absorb their energy so it's like you really really like need to like be able to distance yourself from that so lilith in the eighth house so eighth house sex death rebirth all these sorts of things and like lilith is like the dark moon right so it's kind of like the shadow like the dark aspects of it and it's like for you it's in scorpio because the eighth house is scorpio so like that's an intense placement to have honestly scorpionic energy anywhere is like intense because it's like you go through like emotion you go through like catharsis but also emotional catharsis can you pop up click on my guest request Yes, you you have been able to be in your own head or you'll lose your mind. You have to be able to. Yes, that's the thing. So that 12th house energy like needs to be in their like with their thoughts like they. So the thing is, like with 12th house, it's like they need to be able to retreat. Otherwise, it's like it just gets too. Like, I always see it as like um, energetic wires crossing. So it's like you spend time with people, you take on their energy, whether it's like just psychic information, all these sorts of things. So you need to be able to detox. Epsom salts actually are really good for like 12th house people. Epsom salts being by water in general to just like detox of like the energy that you've taken on. Because 12th house people are pretty much healers because you guys bounce off of Virgo, right? Because it's like they're on the same axis. So it's like you're healers, you want to help, you attract a lot of people into your life that are like, you know, people that have been through things because they feel your healing energy. So then they basically want to, um, so then they basically, you know, want to talk to you want to release everything onto you and then you just basically get drained showers could also be good anything to do with water to cleanse let's see what else is there here neptune squared sun squared moon how do you see this neptune squared sun neptune squared moon can you tell me what placements you have it in neptune squared venus what about it for you with that square to venus is like there could be like illusions around like relationships you know there could be some sort of like things that you're not seeing clearly in relationships is it true that whatever sign you have your Venus in is your love match? Okay, so I did a video today about this, but it's like it really depends because there's a lot of things to um, look at in terms of looking for a partner. And I was actually thinking today, I was like, I should make a longer video about this because it really, really depends on, um, again, whether you're looking for like a longer term partner, are you looking for someone to like be a spouse? So then are you looking for a husband? Are you looking for a wife? That's what you would look at. So venus so basically like for men they would look at venus so like with men the venus sign is going to say what kind of woman they're going to attract into their life like if they're looking for a woman um for women they would actually look at mars and they would actually look at jupiter as well it's going to kind of tell you you know but also what venus could tell you is like where you'll meet the person how you'll meet the person all these sorts of things neptune in the 12th house with moon in the eighth house you are super psychic my friend sun in the second house you're probably super psychic and i know you're into astrology so you're super super psychic Hey, you people, welcome. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions or anything you'd like to know about astrology. It can be anything metaphysical, psychic world, psychic life, all these sorts of things. But yeah, Neptune in the 12th house, really intense. Moon in the 8th house. So moon in the 8th house, again, is like, you could have even had like substance abuse within the home. Like, like there could have been, usually moon deals with the mother or whoever took on the mother role or whoever took on like, if the roles were reversed. So basically like whoever was more in the feminine in the home or if there was a lack of. So eighth house, there could have been some sort of substance abuse that took place in the home or just addictions in general. So it could have been like a shopping addiction or just like anything to do with escaping, really. Solar return ascendant is conjunct my Lilith. What will happen? Solar return ascendant is conjunct my Lilith. Nothing bad will happen. Don't worry. <laughs> Hi, Virgo rising Aries moon thoughts on June. Like what I think is going to happen in the month of June for you. Let me know if that's what you're asking. What's your view on Pluto in the sixth house? So Pluto in the sixth house is like, okay, so wherever Pluto goes through is like what you're transforming in your life. So for you, the sixth house is anything to do Virgo-like qualities. So basically, you're going to have to learn how to not be stuck in a, like not get stuck in a rigid routine. So like, let's say you do get stuck in a rigid routine, Pluto comes through and breaks that up for you is really what that is with the sixth house going on in there. Also, it could be things like health, healing, um, yeah, being of service. The thing is like the sixth house also you could even with pluto in the sixth you could even have like fears around like health and all these sorts of things um or even just get like stuck on like a certain diet and again pluto comes through and shakes this up for you that's really what pluto does so wherever pluto is is shaking that energy up for you you're you're also a capricorn sun so capricorn sun aries moon virgo rising with the virgo rising there you're probably psychic because you have that virgo rising going on in there also virgo rising was royalty in a past life aries moon 
usually starting a new cycle june so there's a lot of things like june out of all the months in this year is going to be kind of like a calm month so we're coming out of mercury retrograde this week actually on the third but then we have two weeks of the post shadow so there's that but it's going to be calmer because right now we have so many things going on like we have new moon in gemini we have the mars and aries going on and i think um jupiter's conjunct something right now at the same time so there's so many things going on right now that's why may was intense but june is going to kind of be like a more relaxed are you a virgo libra <laughs> thank you thank you i am a libra i'm a libra sun libra rising yes scorpio moon yes you feel like you also shock people with what you're doing day to day they're like what <laughs> yeah let me know, people who are joining, if you guys have any questions about astrology, psychic world, metaphysical world, all these sorts of things. You think you have an unusual chart, but you're not entirely sure. Everything is super intense. Ooh, can you tell me what unusual chart means? I love unusual. You're expecting money from a contract that you signed on the 20th of March. So it might be delayed for you for now because Mercury is in retrograde. Okay, so if, it's, if it feels like it's delayed, it's because of Mercury in retrograde right now. How does Taurus relate to the 12th house? So Taurus is very much like earthly things. So Taurus lives life through the senses, right? So it's all about what you can see, what you can touch, what you can smell. Like Taurus is about the physical plane. And a lot of the time, what people say is like, we have to learn from the opposition. So the opposition to Taurus is going to be Scorpio. So it's almost like Taurus within themselves, like they do have like this aspect where they are interested in spirituality or like the occult or psychic world, like all these sorts of things. But it's almost like they kind of suppress that because it's like, basically with the Taurus energy, it's like they're builders. So it's like they want to build, they want to like set out on a plan and build it. So when it's in the 12th house, it's hidden. First of all, that energy is hidden. But also it's like you could be dealing with like illusions around things, right? Or it's like there could be a push-pull energy between like 12th house Pisces wanting to be spiritual, Taurus wanted, wanting to be grounded, right? Or it could work out in your favor where it's like 12th house gives you ideas, Taurus puts it into action. There was always like a light side and a dark side. What about your Neptune dominance? So again, 12th house energy. 12th house energy is like very definitely go check out on my youtube channel i talk about pisces and 12th house energy i go super in depth like there's just so much to say about the 12th house it's like you guys are super psychic you guys are able to tap into the other side because psychic okay this is the thing like psychic things are ideas is really what that is psychic world doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be doing readings for people it could just be you being creative you doing art doing music that's 12th house energy is all music it's anything with illusions and delusions and it's anything to do with i'm reading the comments but it's anything to do with illusions and delusions so it's like you can be in the light aspects of it where with like the 12th house you are creating your channel and creative idea ideas and creativity and like doing something with that energy or you can fall into like the shadows where you go into like the delusional aspect of it where it's like you're again like it's you're too much in your head you're too much in your crown so you might become paranoid right because the energy is not being channeled it needs to it needs to get out of the system so like 12th house people neptune dominant people Piscean people, best thing for you guys is to be creative in one way, shape, or form. Like, express yourselves creatively and stay away from substances. Because it's like, uh, Piscean, Neptunian people, 12th house people have, like, a really, really hard time um, being on the earth plane. Okay? So that's, like, a huge thing. It's, like, because they're psychic, it's just more interesting for them to be up here all the time. And that's why a lot of the time, Piscean, 12th house, Neptunian people um manifest people into their life like actually like virgos that are going to help ground you guys back down to earth so it's like there is an aspect of pisces 12th house neptunian energy right that just like wants to be led right because again they need a container for their energy that's why a lot of the time when you see artists in like the music industry um they're heavily 12th house or piscean in one way shape or form like you'll see it throughout their charts and it's like they have a team working with them definitely check out my video on youtube i go way more in depth okay let's see what else do we have here you said you sure hope so. You sound like a wonderful lady. Glad to be here. Thank you. I'm glad to have you here. I've seen your comments on my videos. Thank you for commenting. Um, Mars in Aries, first house. Scorpio, Venus, Pluto, eighth house, 10th house, Capricorn, Saturn. That's an intense chart. You could be interested in, you could be interested in entrepreneurship with that chart. You could be interested in mediumship. You could be interested because 10th house Capricorn is all about climbing the higher echelons of society. So if your Saturn is in the 10th house, you like it's it's kind of like it's your karma to also work with the public in one way shape or form so like that could manifest differently in, in so many different ways jupiter and pluto 
Jupiter, Pluto in the third house. Jupiter, hold on. Jupiter and Pluto in Scorpio in the third house. So third house is Gemini. It deals with siblings. It deals with communication. It deals with um, written or spoken word. So for you with Jupiter being in the third house, you could actually make money from the written or spoken word. But with Gemini, it's like things that are shorter. It depends on the rest of your chart, really. So it's like things that are shorter. So like you could be interested in, you know, like Twitter, right? Because it's short and to the point. You could be interested in like writing poems. Like that, those types of things that are like short, like that's the Gemini energy with the Jupiter in there. So you can make abundance through that. Pluto and Scorpio in the third house. So I talk a lot about Pluto and Scorpio. That's the millennial generation overall, right? Like there's like the tail ends, which kind of belong, like which is kind of like summer, summer Gen X and summer, um going to be gen z but overall like pluto and scorpio is millennial generation so check out my videos on that and third house is kind of like okay so pluto basically like whatever house it goes through is like it's transforming that house right so that's really what tr what pluto is all about so for you it's transforming anything anything to do with the third house it could also deal with again siblings so there's something that could have taken place with like siblings for you or like i don't know i'm getting that like there could have been like maybe competition with siblings or, or like siblings were like pinned against each other something of that sort is coming through earth plane Earth plane does in my head, lol. Okay, let's see. Saggy, Sun, Moon, Mercury in the eighth, Taurus, Jupiter. Is it just me or is that a lot? Also, 10th Capricorn, Stellium. Capricorn is all about climbing the higher echelons of society. So you could be interested in working with the public in one way, shape, or form. Yeah, there's the real estate. Yeah, Capricorn, like the 10th house Capricorn energy needs to be seen. So it's like you want to work with the public. So it's like real estate is a good way of working with the public or people who are in like customer service. But Capricorn climbs. So a lot of the time, like that Capricorn 10th house stellium that you have is like later on in life. So Capricorn basically spends their like life building and then later on in life. And I'm putting this like quotations because it's like everything's happening faster now than it was before. So it's like when we looked at astrology back in the day, it's like we would say that it's the second half of their life. They're going to be like at the level that they're looking for. But because everything's happening faster now, it could happen sooner than that for you. Pisces rising. Very, very interesting natal chart because there's a lot of people in the public eye who have your natal chart. So it's really, really interesting. I don't know if you were ever interested in working like in something of that sort. What else do we have here? Translate short stories and your English teacher and writer. There you go. You are in, in your field. Like you are doing it. Do I have Venmo? I do have PayPal. It's going to... So my PayPal... Um... I have it on my YouTube page. You're, you'd have to go under one of my videos to get my PayPal link. Or you can send me an email. I can send it to you. You do not like a single one of your siblings. There you go. See, astrology does not lie. What are your pronouns? You guys can call me whatever you want. You, When you move to Australia, you, cha you checked your chart and your Pluto falls in the first house. So Pluto in the first house is going to give you the undertone of having a Scorpio rising. Okay? So definitely check out videos on Scorpio rising because that could resonate with you. You really appreciate oh no worries thank you thank you for tuning in i'm excited i'm actually like loving this like live thing i'm probably gonna do these more often <laughs> your childhood was really intense aqua rising mars chiron neptune there's all that piscean energy going on in there leo saturn sag jupiter so aquarius rising you were always kind of like different from the crowd aquarius placements are like 10 to 15 years ahead of their time so it's like the ideas you have are always like things that are going to become a thing in the future. So make sure you act on the ideas that you get because they're basically being guided divinely. Like they're being channeled. You have Capricorn. Okay, you want to guess? Okay, you guess. I mentioned it earlier, but yes, you can go ahead and guess. You like watching my videos? Thank you. Thank you. I enjoy making them. It's actually one of my favorite things that I've done in my entire life. And I've worked at 13 Jobs in my life before I became independent. So I've done a lot of different jobs. This is definitely my favorite thing. When you moved from your home, when you moved from your home country, Saturn and, and Chiron. Leo Stellium, hello, Leo Stellium. Welcome, I love the Leo energy. In the third house and Gemini rising. So for you, with that third house energy, written or spoken word, you're gonna be interested in writing, okay? Or speaking, communicating, especially with Leo, you need to be seen, okay? You gotta be seen in one way, shape or form. Gemini rising, fire, moon, <laughs> earth, sun, really interesting that that's coming through guess try to guess like the actual placements yes let us know when you do your lives i will i will let you guys know congratulations finding on what you like doing yes it took a long time to get here i'll tell you guys that much i've done so many different things like it's crazy but you know what that's what your 20s should be i'll tell you guys that right now you should try everything that you want to do and see if you like it because it's like i feel like what happens with people a lot of the time is like we have these ideas in our mind and when it's in our mind there's a 12 house piscean energy it's like when it's in your mind it's like you romanticize it right 
sometimes when you actually do that thing, it's not what you thought it was going to be like. That's why I'm, I'm always like, you gotta, you're not actually not close. <laughs> you're probably going to be actually surprised. Well, maybe with the Gemini rising, you're close. When you move from your home country, your Saturn and Chiron and Neptune line fall and it's just, ugh. Let me know where your home country is. Saturn, Capricorn, Uranus, Capricorn, Neptune, Capricorn. Oh, you're all in Capricorn. You're probably being hit hard right now with the Pluto in Capricorn. So if you're going through hard times right now, like people who have Capricornian placements, it's going to clear up by 2024 when Pluto leaves Capricorn. Because like, okay, you have to see what house you have Capricorn in because that's what Pluto is like destructing for you right now. Oh my gosh, you're in Greece. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. I went to Greece once. I went to Greece once. It's beautiful there. You don't like Greece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Capricorn people, honestly, like Capricorn people are really being hit hard right now. Let me know what house it's in. I'm, I'm curious. Albania. Oh, your home country's Albania and you're living in Greece. Or are you from Greece living in Albania? Nice. Gemini sun, Cancer moon, Aquarius rising. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good guess. I have Libra sun, Scorpio moon, and Libra rising. But my sun is in the 12th house and now it's shifted. So I'm in my secondary progression. So in my secondary progression, sun is Scorpio, uh, moon is Sag, and rising is Scorpio. And it's now in the first house. That's why I'm like, I'm here, you guys. I'm here. Neptune, Uranus, and Capricorn in the eighth. Yeah, yeah. So the eighth house. So you're probably like anything to do with like things that were hidden are probably coming to the surface for you during this time. Is anything to do with like sex, death, rebirth, um, taxes, joint finances. So I don't know if you have like joint assets with people. You could be going through something where like, you know, you're either separating assets or like things like this. Like Pluto is like switching it up or maybe you're moving into joint finances, like things like this. First house, so for you, it's all to do with the ego and the identity. Like right now, you're probably going through either like a breakdown of the ego. You are going through like a huge like identity change. Like you're probably going to be interested, like, like during this time for you, like the Capricorn in the first house, you're going to be going through so many like changes like about the self and it's also about the head also so maybe you're doing like hairstyle changes or something like that or interested in it nope moved from albania and you live in greece nice why did you move you would not have guessed that in your little not what you sound like i know i think it's because i have my son now in the first house which kind of gives me like a leo rising i guess like the undertones of it Neptune, Saturn, Uranus, third house. So for you, because so basically like some of the things for people who are joining what we're talking about is like Pluto being in Capricorn. So people who have Capricorn placements are being hit by Pluto tra like transiting them. So it's going to be up until 2024 until we officially move. So for you, third house is going to be anything to do with communication, siblings, maybe uh, technology, all these sorts of things. June collectively in astrology is actually going to be a calmer month compared to the rest of the months. Like we're exiting retrograde and we're going to like exit Mars and Aries because right now Mars is in Aries. So a lot of people are probably fighting and arguing, especially people who are like the cardinal signs. So like Libra, Aquarius, or sorry, Libra, Aries, um, Libra, Aries, Capricorn, and Cancer. You're trying so, so hard to see it. You're trying. You said, oh, yes, I am so hard. I'm trying to see it as a gift to learn i know it's challenging especially like when it's like not i guess planned but like what's planned in life how does someone tap into their psychic ability oh my gosh so excited okay so this is like my experience with the psychic world okay so it's my experience this is what's worked for me because like different things are going to work for different people so just because it worked for me might not work for you so you guys can take what resonates and leave behind what does not so I was always psychic, like from young, okay, ever since I was a kid, I was always psychic, like my dreams would come true, and my grandma actually helped me a lot with that, like she would always ask me about my dreams, so it was her who was like, oh my gosh, your dreams come true, and so on and so forth, there was a point of time where you just get busy with life, and you're not as in tune with it, um, but yeah, so basically what helped me strengthen it was quitting certain substances, so alcohol, unfortunately, um, caffeine, I had to actually stop drinking, I was drinking too much, like I was drinking like three large coffees, it was just intense, so I had to cut that down. I literally have just like a little bit in the morning to ground me. So I had to stop drinking caffeine because, okay, the caffeine thing is like when you drink too much coffee, you don't actually sleep deep enough to go into an REM sleep. And then especially if you're someone who has anxiety, if you're psychic, you're probably picking up on a lot of information. So it might bring that through. Uh, the best thing I can suggest is learn your own energy. Okay, that's the biggest thing you can do is learn your own energy because if you're like clairsentient, 
then you'll be able to pick up on like, this is this person's energy. This is my person's energy, right? So that's a huge thing is like learning your own energy. Healing is really important. So especially in like the psychic world, like, okay, when we look at the chakras, what you want to do is you want to come out of the lower ones to be able to go into the higher ones. So there's a lot to do with like healing lower wounding. So it's like generational things that have been passed down. Um, these are like overall collective wounds that like exist. So it's like generational things, abandonment wounds. Uh, what else? Um, giving your power away to people. Those are the biggest ones in the collective. Yes, yes, yes. I believe you're psychic too. Like usually people who are interested in like the world of astrology and all these sorts of things, like you're definitely psychic. You're definitely, definitely psychic. Uh, what else? Keeping like, okay, so usually what I teach with like uh, people who are interested in, in like learning their intuition is like the first thought you have is intuition and then anything to follow is going to be your ego trying to convince you otherwise. So what you want to do is like learn to train the intuitive muscle that you don't listen to the ego as much as um the psychic muscle so there's that other things like eating clean so food brings our vibration down like not all food just like junky foods um all these sorts of things so there's that as well that could also like maybe help you let's see what else um you can't seem to tap into it so that's the thing it's like it's really like a process like it's a muscle like you have to look at psychic world and the psychic realms as a muscle because it's like if you don't like if you don't grow it it'll kind of just like go benign you know and it's like when you do grow it it's just it's always on also so it's like kind of learning to like differentiate is the biggest thing you know is this like my energy is this this person's energy okay what was the first thing that i thought of because the ego is always going to try to convince us otherwise you said you left albania and it's a really bad country to live in oh i'm so sorry you had to leave your home country do you have aquarius or gemini and mercury at least <laughs> no i have um my my mercury is in libra actually pisces sun aquarius moon scorpio rising hi mercury venus moon and saturn and aquarius in the third house third house you are all but the written or spoken word you could be interested in being a writer speaker you need to you need to talk that's gemini energy gemini needs to talk and third house people because i know there was a few of you earlier you guys also like get opportunities by connections okay so like talking to people going to networking events your friend's gonna call you up and they're gonna be like hey i have this job opportunity or i have whatever whatever right so that's like a good thing with like that's gemini and third house because it's the same thing what about this new moon in gemini what should we expect your sag sun virgo moon and what's your rising this was malvin Ali. let me know what your rising is so new moon in gemini okay so there's a lot of things going on astrologically right now with the new moon in gemini so, like new moon is our new beginnings so because it's in gemini like Gemini in general is like very much like when we're in Gemini season, it's like very much up here. So it's all about the mind. It's all about intellect. It's being charming. Um, a lot of them are actually funny also. So that's really that Gemini energy. And it's like when we're like right now, because we have that, we have that new moon. And on top of that, we have Mars and Aries. There's a lot of things. And we have Mercury retrograde in Gemini. What's happening right now is like a lot of things are like, first there's miscommunication, but there's also a lot of like wanting to communicate, you know, like wanting to say something to someone or like not being able to hold it anymore or like needing to communicate. If you can't communicate with people, you can always like write it down. Capricorn planets are supposed to relax this year. No, Pluto's in Capricorn. So as long as Pluto's in Capricorn, like they're going through transformations, the Capricorn placements. Let's see. You tried to connect with your ancestors and you found yourself. Is this, were you doing like a meditation of some sort and you met your great grandma? Okay, I saw that when your grandma believes you're psychic. Coffee is the reason you wake up in the morning. You can't give it up. Do you eat meat? Were you asking me? I don't eat meat. No, I don't. And I also don't eat eggs, but I do have dairy still for now. I'm, I'm like on and off with the dairy, but I love ice cream too much. How do you do that though? Let me know. Let me know what you're asking. I'm just catching up on the messages now. Like how do you, how do we do what? Can Pluto in the 11th house be a motivational speaker? Yeah, so actually, 11th house deals with large groups of people. So 11th house is Aquarius. So it's all about connecting people together, large groups of people, networking events, all those sorts of things. That makes no sense at all. Explain yourself. Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm delayed in the messages, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. You'd love to hear my input on North Node in Cancer in the 12th house. So North Node in Cancer. Okay, so this is the thing, like, when we look at the North Node, you want to look at the South Node. So North Node in Cancer, basically in a past life, you were South Node in Capricorn. So in a past life, you would have been someone who was like a hard worker. You worked hard. You wanted to climb the higher echelons of society. Maybe you didn't have time for a family. So you incarnate with the North Node in Cancer, basically looking for that homey feel, trying to create family, all these sorts of things. And then 12th house. So like 
the north node is like our life purpose our dharma some people say like it's kind of like what we're meant to complete and then some people also say that once we complete the north node we cross out of the earth plane so it's kind of like your whole life you're striving towards the north node but then the south node kind of pulls you back because it's like it's uh, familiar and comfortable so 12th house it's like in this lifetime you're basically meant to do something within the world of spirituality so it's like whether it's psychic work whether it is music whether it is um painting like the psychic world is like you're channeling ideas and bringing them through okay and connecting people you could even be interested in becoming a spiritual teacher of some sort because in a past life the 12th house you would have had sixth house in virgo so in the 12th house like sorry with a sixth house in virgo south node you probably were someone in a past life that was like very much about the day-to-day -day. you didn't get to explore spirituality so probably in this lifetime you're in some sort of circumstance where you're able to explore spirituality as well you're very smart and fast thinker thank you <laughs> yes thank you thank you thank you i mean libra is an air sign as well and they're also i guess ch like chatty and bubbly so they're kind of like sister signs you have north node sorry you have pisces node in leo degrees you have pisces is it pisces north node in leo degrees 11th house is that what you're is that what you're saying let me know no worries no worries I'm going to leave in five minutes, you guys. So let me know if you have anything else you'd like to know about before I do leave. I actually really enjoyed this. So I'm going to come back on actually one day, maybe even tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually tried something different today with my eyeliner. So I'm, I'm glad that you like it. Thank you so much. So uh, more often, okay, yes, I will. I will come more often. I enjoy it too. I enjoy it too. You know what it is? Like I have a lot of fixed sign energy in my chart, so it takes a, l a long time for me to like switch my schedule. So today I was like, I'm going live. Like there's so many times where I was like, I'm gonna do it, whatever. So anyways, and then I'm like, I want to do this thing. I want to do that thing. So today I was like, I'm doing it. I I will be back. I will be back. I love teaching and I love talking. <laughs> and I'll be on probably for longer next time. Okay, you said North Node in Pisces in a Leo degree in the 11th house. So, okay, North Node in Pisces. So basically whatever I said to the person earlier about like the spiritual life, that's also probably going to resonate with you as well because of the Piscean energy. The 11th house is all about connecting people. So it's all about connecting people, starting trends, humanitarian work. Like when I tap into 11th house energy, it's like, it's really all about like, large groups of people because okay 11th house is Aquarius right so a Aquarius is ahead of their time and basically the ideas that Aquarius has they're meant to bring them through to bring the collective forward that's what it's like the large group of people so that's basically what it is for you so that's that's part of your life purpose okay that's part of your life purpose because in a past life you would have had south node um so Aquarius is 11th house so you would have had south node in Leo okay in, in the fifth house so in a past life you probably like were more so creative in like an entertainment type of way this lifetime you want to be creative and like a bringing ideas forward like in an intellectual type of way right and like a I have ideas you could be a scientist you could be an inventor like really something that's like futuristic to propel the collective forward and also like Aquarius is like very much about like technology um all these sorts of things advice for Capricorn selling in the fifth house so Capricorn, you guys are all about hard work, okay? You guys tend to be very much like when you're younger, you're super serious and mature. And when, when you grow up, you, you like relax a little bit. Like you kind of get more into the inner child as you age. It's kind of like Benjamin Button. That's the Capricornian energy. It's like very Benjamin Button. And it's like, I just did a video on this today, but I haven't uploaded it yet because I did Capricorn Moon. But Capricorn energy, like what tends to happen is like for whatever reason when Capricorn energy like incarnates there's something that happens within the family dynamic where it's like there isn't like a sense of financial stability so a lot of the time Capricorn energy basically wants to come out of whatever financial status or just st social status that they were born into okay so when you have a Capricorn cellium like you're looking to elevate your social status and it's about climbing because it's like the mountain goat right so you're climbing to the top and you're going to spend your lifetime climbing Scorpio Venus in the 11th house. Scorpio Venus is, is intense. Scorpio Venus is intense because it's like Venus and Scorpio is like you basically struggle. Unfortunately, like with the Scorpio Venus, it's like you want depth. You want depth in a, in a partner. You want someone who understands you on an intuitive level. 
you want someone who's going to understand you um on like this 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 like almost like psychic connection right like that's what scorpio venus looks for and like for whatever reason they like manifest like people who aren't like that so it triggers the abandonment wound so that's the thing like scorpio placements in general struggle with the abandonment abandonment wound is really what that is especially scorpio venus so in terms of love you could struggle with that like fear of abandonment all these sorts of things and then in turn it's going to make you maybe possessive um controlling like you know what i mean but it's like it's like subconscious with the scorpio energy is really what that is all of them having relationship issues yeah i can see that what do you think happens after physical death so again this is just my opinion um we go into another dimension is really what that is like it's like when we're here on the earth plane it's a dimension like we're in a dimension it's like hard to believe because it's very physical it's very tangible but it's a dimension is really what that is so after you cross over the soul goes on because it's energy right so it's like you finish whatever you had to do here you learned your lessons you grew that's the whole thing like we're growing here we're evolving and then you just go into a different plane you go into a different you go into a different dimension my venus is in scorpio my mars is in cancer actually all right you guys i'll take maybe one more question if you guys have and then i'm going to have to sign off i will be back i will be back i enjoyed this i enjoyed this you guys are awesome thank you so much for the questions you guys scorpio venus in the second house yeah scorpio venus is is just not fun like it's like i'm i'm really happy because my chart has progressed like it's come out of those intense scorpio placements but it was intense it was definitely intense there is a lot of work to be done with scorpio placements in general i have recorded in-depth scorpio videos on my channel where i go like in-depth as to what you can do how you can work with it how you can heal the energy because it's like scorpio energy is like you're psychic right so it's like especially like even in the venus but in general wherever it is like you're a psychic so you intuitively pick up on everything and it's like you're gonna pick up on people's shadow traits and you're gonna pick up on people's shadows so it's like that's why scorpio doesn't like quote unquote being lied to because they know they're being lied to so then the trigger for them is like someone's lying to them it's not the fact like that there's a lie is just like they know that there's a lie so it's like you could get into like interesting circumstances with all of that thank you thank you 11th house of healing i'm glad you enjoyed the video do i have children no i do not have children all right my dear friends i'm going to sign off make sure you go check out my youtube channel i will be back one day soon thank you for all the likes you guys let me see how i can turn this off have a great great evening or day wherever you guys are located